episode, we had begun to unravel the incredible story of Lipa. How in 1948, Teresita Castillo, a young girl who had run away from home to become a Carmelite nun, received visits first from an entity she believed was the devil, and then from a lady who later identified herself as Mary, Mediatrix of All Grace. The Mediatrix spoke of prayer, penance, humility, the rosary, and concern for fallen souls, especially those of priests and nuns. During this period, the fragrance of flowers would fill the air, and rose petals would materialize out of nowhere and fall on the grounds, rooms, and even blanket the stairway of the convent. Privy to all these events was Mother Mary Cecilia of Jesus, who happened to be the mistress of novices and prioress of Carmel at the same time. Another protagonist was the Carmelite chaplain and auxiliary bishop of the Diocese of Lipa, Monsignor Alfredo Obiar. He in turn would report to the bishop of the diocese, Monsignor Alfredo Versosa, who, angered by the events and the public attention that Carmel had begun to attract, went to Lipa to put an end to everything, but was himself greeted by a shower of petals and, as a result, had a change of heart. Carmel rapidly became a national passion, with thousands streaming from all parts of the country to the convent grounds, and a replica of the statue of Mary Mediatrix was born in procession in New York and Madrid amidst crowds of enthusiastic devotees. In those heady years, crowds repeatedly witnessed petals falling from the sky, and there were reports of a spinning sun, a moving statue, and a host of marvelous cures and conversions. Masses, novenas, and rosaries were said at the shrine, and a church called the Chapel of Mary Mediatrix of All Grace was erected on the convent grounds, funded entirely by public donations. Like most places where reports of the supernatural abound, Lipa was not spared from commercialism and the rush of opportunists anxious to cash in on the events. Restaurants and stalls selling all matter of religious items sprung up around the city. At the height of the showers, fake petal rackets mushroomed and petals were supposedly on sale at the then staggering cost of 30 pesos apiece. The Carmelite nuns also had to deal with unauthorized solicitation purportedly on their behalf. Whether because of the rampant commercialism or some other aspect of the events, certain sectors of the Catholic Church hierarchy were not pleased. In this second half of the Keithley Report on Lipa, we focus on the investigation that followed the reported apparitions, the results of which were to bring a rapid and abrupt end to what had been a most extraordinary phenomenon. after the onset of the petal showers, Carmel Lipa suffered the first in a series of setbacks. On January 23, 1950, though he had not reached the mandatory age of retirement from office, Bishop Alfredo Bersosa was suddenly relieved of the administration of the Diocese of Lipa. After 33 years of dedication, catechetical work, and active service, he remained Bishop of Lipa in name only. Virtually all powers of one of the largest and richest dioceses of the Philippines was transferred into the hands of an apostolic administrator. I was present when he was reading the letter that came from the Holy See and uh, the immediate reaction of the old bishop was uh, we were all standing around him, he was sitting on the sofa and then he said this letter really came from the Holy Father. He was saying it in Spanish. Of course, the two Monsignor Santos and Monsignor Magnosi say, well, of course, you know, we came here to bring you precisely to intimate it to you, to, to let you know, you know. And that's what his answer is. 
If it came from the Holy Father and it is written from the Holy Father, I have nothing to do but to bow my head and obey the Holy Father. But if this is not from the Holy Father, and he's alluding maybe something might come from somebody, he said, they, we will see it. Talk was that he had been replaced because he had allowed public enthusiasm to grow around the phenomenon of Lipa. Sometimes other bishops, his friends, say, why do you not be strong in prohibiting this? No? You know, the, the, what the late bishop said, say, well, what power do I have? If it, this is really from heaven, I cannot do anything. If the people are uh, uh, receiving special graces or whatever this, they are saying that they are receiving this, I cannot prevent them. Say. That's why I neither will, will say no more, no, as a drastic uh, measure like that. Because uh, this is what he said. If this is of God's, no human power can stop it. But according to Father Juan Coronel, then Chancellor of the Diocese of Lipa, Versosa was replaced because he had mismanaged the economic affairs of the diocese and that his removal had nothing to do with the events at Lipa Carmel. No relation at all. They say that uh, during all those years of Portuguese administering the Diocese of Lipa, it seems that the diocese became bankrupt, no? But... Uh, I know also personally that he became bankrupt and even his family, who is a very well-to-do family in Began, became bankrupt because he was spending, he was so good. Extant documents of the chancery of the diocese at Lipa seem to buttress Pedernal's assessment of Versosa's irreproachable character. Though Versosa may have been thought a poor administrator, he excelled in the primary duty of his office, which was to bring more souls to the faith. For he focused on establishing catechetical centers and sending catechists throughout the far-flung corners of his diocese. And records nevertheless show that prior to his relief, he was engaged in the reconstruction of the churches that had been leveled by the war, and that the first installment of the war damage claim was used to settle these debts and to finance the needs of various religious orders. I have been telling you there was a vested interest because they know sooner or later Bishop Bessosa was going to retire. And there were people in Manila, of course, priests or Monsignor, were interested. Church, Church of God. Run by men. It may never be known for certain what cost the bishop his seat, whether it was age, economic mismanagement, vested interests, or the fact that he had permitted public enthusiasm around Lipa to burgeon into a virtual national passion. He has since passed away, and surviving accounts and testimonies somehow seem to be in conflict. Bishop Versosa was replaced by Monsignor Rufino Santos, and it was under his authority that an official church commission was formed to investigate the apparitions at Lipa. As far as we know, all materials and documents in the Philippines have been burned or destroyed, and none can be found within the files of the Arzobispados of Lipa, Manila, and the Nunchatur. We know that a Carmelite father was sent by their generalate in Rome to conduct an investigation among the Carmelite nuns. And according to our sources at the Vatican, this was due to a request sent by Monsignor Vagnozzi, then still just a papal delegate to the Philippines. As far as can be determined, based upon the recollections of Terra Singh, other testimonies, and of newspaper clippings of the time, the local commission was made up of psychologist Father Angelo Blas, rector of the University of Santo Tomas, psychiatrist Dr. Leopoldo Pardo, Father Ortega, Monsignor Artemio Casas, and Monsignor Santos. When the investigation began, the distribution of petals was stopped and the release of official statements from Carmel on the apparitions put to a halt. The conduct of the investigation and its results, however, caused the congregation and the visionary much pain. Mother Cecilia, the visionary's primary confidant and reportedly too a recipient of interior locutions, soon shared the fate of the Bishop of Lipa. 
On February 27, 1950, she was suddenly unexplainably replaced as prioress and mistress of Carmel. The whole community summoned to go to the choir, and so all of us went there. And then after, Monsignor Santos was in the middle and said, you will have another prioress from now on. Here is Mother Mary of Christ, and Sister Magdalene, Magdalene to be your mistress, because we can't say anything. And then she addressed Mother Cecilia and said, and you, Mother Cecilia, I'm giving you half an hour to pack your things, and no more, no more than that. So she left. I did not see her go because we were all told to, to wait there in the choir, and I did not know what happened, and I did not even know I, I, knew, I knew that she was going because it was announced to us, but the way she, she left, I did not see. When she left, I don't know why. But I was full. I was really full. Na, na ano kaya? What's the next? Why? I was, I was full inside, thinking, bakit kaya? Did Mother Cecilia do anything wrong or something? Ganon, ano ha? I just prayed, but the others were And then when I was in the choir for meditation, there, that was the time I started to cry. My first was happening was that when our mother was taken, and we did not know where she would stay. And she just left us. And then, secondly, of course, we know Mother Mary of Christ by name, but we do not really know her personally. And of course, that was a big pain for each and every one of us. But then, I, I can see that the sisters were a little bit, bang, kabado siguro, ha? something like that. Umiiyak, malimit, umiiyak, ganun. And then I did not know till later na, na uh, ito pala si Mother Cecilia was brought to Haro, Haro Carnel. They said it was for investigation also. In the meantime, the sudden reassignment of Mother Marianne Kuna, sub prioress and infirmarian of Lipa, caused her family considerable consternation. Nawala siya. Isang may panahon na hindi namin nalaman kung saan siya nandu doon. Tinatanong namin, Kung nasa, hindi rin nila alam, sabi ng Marka Carmelite. She was told to ask then papal delegate Monsignor Ehidio Vagnosi regarding the whereabouts of her sister. Pumunta naman ako sa kanya, ano, miiyak ako, sabi ko, Monsignor, sabi ko ganun. Gusto ko lang malamang kung nasa yung kapatid ko, si Mother Mary Ann. Ngayon sabi niya, ah, sasabihin ko na lang sa'yo kung kailan mo siya pwedeng makita. Perhaps the second most important witness to the occurrences at Lipa was Bishop Oviar. As auxiliary bishop of Lipa and chaplain of Carmel, he had closely monitored all the developments, had allowed the nuns to commission a statue, approve the release of the apparition story and messages to the public, and had even blessed the groundbreaking and foundation of the new Carmelite chapel. Oviar too was relieved of his position. He stayed on in Lipa at the family residence in a sort of limbo, so to speak, and only after a year was assigned to the Diocese of Lucena, demoted to the rank of Apostolic Administrator. So we, we were like that, and until the time that the investigators came over. And so we were, uh, uh, we were investigated one by one. There are no records of when this investigation at Carmel took place. Teresing remembers being questioned by Monsignor Artemio Casas and Father Ortega. Sister Elizabeth and Mother Mary also remember being questioned, but others claim they were not. I was never questioned. No, never. Never. Maybe if it happened these days, it would have been very much easier because you can ask questions now, huh? even from the priors, you can ask, you can have a dialogue, but that time you cannot. So we remained um, in, in doubt all the time, hanging in the air, not knowing what the next step will be in one meeting of the novices. 
and we were talking about that and said yun pala even mother pirates can be picked up like that how much more us we were telling like that so all of us were really scared any time eh, hindi na kayo ako nang susunod sabi ko naman <laughs> because it, I'm the one um, connected with this case Singh was right. Soon afterwards, the postulant was picked up by Monsignor Santos and, chaperoned by Sister Stephanie, brought to the hospital of the University of Santo Tomas in Manila. Him, bakit may sakit ba ako? I wanted to ask him, bakit ako dinala dito? May sakit ba ako? Ganun, no? But as usual, mortification of the tongue, you see, because they say that. When you mortify interior feelings like that, that is ano, yung better than any uh, external instrument of penance. That's much, much better, yung interior. So I, did, I kept my mouth shut. Terry Singh was subsequently interrogated at UST by psychologist Father Angelo Blas and a noted psychiatrist, Dr. Leopoldo Pardo. Father Blas was the first to question her. And he started asking me, do you have a tendency, in the family, do you have a tendency? Na, or do you have a member of your family who became insane? <laughs> I said, not that I know of, Father, I said. Or any sickness, say, of the head, or the nerves, or something like that. I said, well, Headaches, oh yes, father, I said, but other diseases, I don't know. The accusation of a lesbian relationship with Mother Cecilia also resurfaced. Three hours, I was, he was pounding on me for three hours. I kept, I kept, naman, I was quiet, but I, I was firm with my, my statements. So he took one piece of paper and then, he gave it to me. Now he signed that, he said. So, I, Father, I will have to read it first. So I read it. And it says there that everything is a hoax, a fraud, and all my imaginations because I just want to be popular, um, to be loved like that. And so I did not sign. Father, I said, I'm sorry, I cannot sign this. I said, why? Because. What, what, you, what you have written here, Father, it's not true, eh, sabi ko. What I'm telling you is true, but what you're telling here is not true. So how do you expect me naman, Father? Please, I said, I cannot really. Then he, 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 got, he got mad, he got mad with me. And he stood up, mayroong ashtray dyan, eh. <laughs> and he took hold of the ashtray, and sabi ko, Katapat ko lang, hindi ko na babato yata to sa akin. I was just thinking that way. He was holding and he, he had no cigarettes naman. So I said, babato yata to sa akin. I was telling to myself like that. So when he stood up, I changed my, I changed, no? I left my, the place, my place, and I, 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 I went a little bit towards the right side, I left side. Sure enough, the, the astray flew. And so, I started to shake. My knees were shaking talaga. Oh, siguro, somebody saw me. I was very pale, siguro. I feel that way na. I was pale and my knees started to, to give way. I said, why don't you like to sign the father? I said, I cannot really sign. I hope about, I said, kindly tell uh, Monsignor uh, um, Santos to kindly come here. Because I need him. So, Facing siya, ganyan, ha, nakaganyan yung kamay. And, and then he said, you know, he said, that, do you know that even Carmelites can imagine things? I said, yes, Father. And then, do you know that being a Carmelite contemplative order 
has, it has more tendency to imagine than active orders. I did not say anything to him. And so when, when we were like that, Father, I said, I'm not feeling well because I felt I was going to faint. I said, I'm not feeling well, Father. So, <laughs> I told him, and I'm not telling a lie. I told him that. If you want to punish me, you can send me out if you like, but I'm, but I'm not telling a lie. I told him that. Eh, siguro, she did not, she did, he did not believe. So, he left me. I was asking for blessing, did that bless me? And so, I told Sister Stephanie, sige na, equal nga mo si Santos, because I was really crying na. And my senior son just came the following day and I was crying. And so I told him like that. And he will be back yet, he said. I said, no, oh, you not It's not good, it's not normal prudent because he asked me to sign something that, that's not true. And I really told him, I swear before that I'm not telling the lie, I said. Sabi niya, it, it has to be. It has to be, ika. Sabi ko naman, oh, sige na lang, oh, sige nga. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he arrived the next day. And then, oh, did you not change your mind? What the signature I'm asking you? I said, no. I said, no, Father. Even if you come back here 20 or 100 times, I'm going to change my mind. Two days later, it was Dr. Pardo's turn. Well, I suppose, I suppose a psychiatrist should act that way. That's what I mean. He made me, he made me feel it, as though I'm out of my mind, as though I'm a, an insane. Okay, good night, sabi. Basta give me the grace, you know. You know, sabi ko, Mama Mary, just give me the grace, like that. And then, so, Dr. Pardo shouted at me, kick the chair inside the room. And I'm, I was sorry about Sister Stephanie was not there. Eh, pinalabas. Sana nandun siya so he could, she could testify nga, ganun, ano? And, and so, sabi niya, doon ba sa pamilya mo, walang loka-loka? He really made me like a fool. Sabi, pero, Ang allowance ko lang, he's just doing his job. That's, yun, that, that's what, that was what, that, that was the grace that was given to me to understand them. And so, I said, if you like, I said, you can, you can go to Batangas. And then, you, you can, you can uh, ask the Patanguinos there, I said, if, in our family, eh, kahit isa, eh, kung merong in insanity in our blood, I said. Then if you will find one, I will surrender all my, 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 ano, yung, like, consent and everything. Yun naman, si Dr. Pardo. He, he, he wanted me to, to, uh, to tell him that uh, I was under strain because of my brother. And then, and my family, and and that was the one that triggered off this all these things. That but that, that was what he wanted me to do. I said, "Hindi naman, doctor. It is not like that. I don't think so." But have, 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 do you know what will happen to you when you enter Carmel? No, I said, "No. Oh, if I knew nga saan, I will not enter anymore." Dr. Pardo and Father Blass are both dead. There are no documents to prove that they had resorted to intimidation or that they had presented Terry Singh with a false document to sign. And as far as can be deduced, there were no other witnesses to the questioning. In all probability, 
taking into consideration testimonies of those who knew their character, both these men, in their attempts to arrive at the truth, had no recourse but to resort to playing devil's advocate. Las hematofágicos de Praites dominican in the Philippines uh, during that time, and a very good psychologist and philosopher. And of course, he was also good in theology. 